Good morning, Kingdom Kids, Mums and Dads, Grannies and Grandpas, Hangers On, all sorts of other people. Great to have you with us this morning, wherever you're watching from. We're delighted that you're able to join us. We've got a couple of notices that are going to be video notices, and I would like you just to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hello. This year we need you to give us a hand to let our church community know that Christmas is no cancel. All you have to do is to find some green paper, any shade of green will do. So you need to find, as I say, any shade of green paper. Then with a pen, go around your hand so you can get a print of your hand shape. If you can, you get the paper and you get a pair of scissors and you cut around carefully because you want to keep your fingers everything spread out if you don't feel confident in using the pair of scissors you can just send the paper and we'll sort something out we hope that everyone can get involved um, and we're going to use your hand print uh, to create a 3g handmade christmas tree and as i say we can use any shade of green and all sides and sizes and shapes of hands. So do please get involved and as soon as you can, please send your hands to uh, hashtag Christmas is no cancel, Barclayville Force Church 1, Wright Houses and number EH10 4HR by the 8th of November. Um, we do need uh, your hand uh, by the 8th of November so we can uh, leave it for 72 hours as the government guidelines tell us to do so before we can uh, create the display of the Christmas tree. Um, thank you. Dad? Hello? Yes, what is it? Christmas tree. Christmas? It's not even December yet. Far too early to be talking about Christmas and Christmas trees. Now, shoot, I've got important work to be doing. Christmas trees. Dad? Oh. Yes, how can I help? This Christmas, can we please go to the Christmas market? Christmas trees? Christmas market? You know there's going to be no Christmas market this year. Christmas market's cancelled. Now, shoot, I've got important work to do. Christmas trees, Christmas markets. Dad? Well, <sighs> yes, what is it? For Christmas, can I be a shepherd in the activity? It's too early for Christmas trees. The Christmas market's cancelled. You know there's going to be no nativity this year. Christmas is cancelled! For Christmas this year, don't be such a grump like my dad. Christmas is never cancelled. And this year, Stephanie's got a brilliant idea for doing the church nativity. Here's my mum to tell us more. She's right. Christmas is never cancelled. What we want to do this year is create our own digital nativity and have as many church families as possible taking part. So, if you are a child in Crash Quest or Next, then this is for you. We want to give you a scene from the Nativity and then you'll use your creative imaginations to create your scene and film it for us. Now, it might be that you'll all film it as a family or you might prefer to use puppets or toys to act it out. We're only at stage one at the moment. So, if you're interested, could you email Stephanie at this address children at barclayviewforth.org.uk and then we can work out how many people want to take part and give out the scenes it's going to be great ho, ho, ho. Ho. I'm going to sing a song now which just reminds us that God wants to be friends with us I'm a friend of God
Who loves rules? I suppose it kind of depends on what the rules are about. I want to tell you about a football match that I once was asked to referee. I don't really know anything about football, but I ended up having to referee a game. And I was just kind of running around, the boys and girls who were there playing, they they were playing quite happily and it was absolutely fine and then somebody said that ball's out and I said what do you mean that ball's out no it's not aye aye it is it absolutely is. that ball was out and other people come in it was definitely it was absolutely out and People on both sides, one was going, oh, that was out. The other was going, no, 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 that wasn't out. 
No, no. Let's, it's not out. Well, where's out? So we had to set a limit. That was, that was where the ball was to be. A few minutes later, one of the boys kicked one of the others. I said, that was a foul. I went, mm, yeah, that, that really was a foul. That, you shouldn't do that. That wasn't very good. I never did it. Oh, well, see, I, I didn't really know the rules properly. I kind of had a, a vague idea, but it needed somebody who really knew and it needed somebody who would tell them, this is where the pitch is going to be. This is what's going to be in. This is what's going to be out. And no, and I didn't. And it was a bit of a disaster. And kind of, that's what happens sometimes. I want to ask you, Do you know any rules that are good? I know lots of rules that are good. I used to be a police officer and I used to have to drive my car really quickly. And I mean, really, really quickly. You put the blue lights on and you put the siren on and you drive really quickly. And I loved it. I loved it. And partly I loved it because I was breaking a rule. Sometimes you would go around at traffic lights if the if the traffic was queued up at the traffic light, you would go onto the wrong side of the road and round the traffic light and, through, and you would go on the red light. You had to be really careful. But sometimes you got to break the rules. And the traffic rules are good because you can't have all the traffic driving wherever they want. Because nobody would get anywhere. There would be loads more accidents than there are. And people would be really badly hurt and nobody would get to travel if everybody just wanted to do their own thing. That wouldn't work. So you need rules that help you to know how to drive a car or a lorry or whatever it is safely. So rules sometimes are good. Sometimes they're a bit daft. You know, for example, I know we have friends who live in America in and, and some states in America, you know, like to chew chewing gum. Yeah. Right. And that's partly because at some point in the past, people used to spit out the chewing gum and it would get walked into the pavement and made a mess. So they said, well, we're just not going to allow chewing gum. So you kind of understand, but it seems, you know, a little bit daft. Maybe you could encourage people to just put it in the bin when they're finished. Anyway. Rules, good and bad sometimes, and we need to work out what's what. What I would like you to do is think to yourself just for a moment, do you have house rules or family rules? And if so, if there's some that you could share, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to have a think and to write some in the chat box so we can see and maybe give ideas as to what might be good and what we think, oh, I'm glad maybe that's not my house. Anyway, a couple of minutes, stick some in there and we'll see what we've got.
So, rules. What I want to do now is I want to read you the story of where we are with the children of Israel. We've been following through and we've been using this book. It's a great book. It's called the Jesus Storybook Bible. Every story whispers his name. And you might wonder, why on earth are we reading the Old Testament stories when Jesus is in the New Testament? Well, actually, there's lots about the stories in the Old Testament that, that help us to understand why Jesus came and who Jesus was and what that was all about. And here we have the Israelites. Moses has come. He's helped them to get out of Egypt. They've got to the Red Sea and then they all had a big panic. Because the Egyptians were coming and the sea was in front of them and they couldn't get across. So they moaned at Moses and Moses prayed and God said, put your stick in the water. So he put his stick in the water and then, well, nothing much happened really. And they kind of waited. But the wind began to blow. And it blew 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 so much that the sea separated and they were able to walk across and when the Egyptians tried to follow them the wind stopped and the sea came back in and the Egyptians were drowned. Well, they were all happy for a bit and then they went into the desert and they've got to, the, to Mount Sinai and that's where we are in this story. And this bit is called 10 Ways to be Perfect. So there they all were, grannies and granddads, babies, uncles, aunts, children's mums and dads, out there in the middle of the desert. They had blisters from all the walking. They were hungry and they were thirsty and they were far, far too hot. We don't like it, they said. It stinks. They said, can we no go back? They said, and maybe some even said, are we nearly there yet? Actually, the truth is, they were a bit smelly because nobody had had a bath for a very long time. But remember, because this is something they'd forgotten, God had done amazing things for his people. He'd hidden them inside a cloud. He'd moved the sea. He'd set them free. But God's people still weren't happy. They didn't care about being free. Wasn't it better that they were slaves? At least they had lots of food to eat. God doesn't want us to be happy, they said. It was the same lie that Adam and Eve had heard all those years before. God's brought us out here to kill us, they said. God doesn't love us, they said. Now, they didn't know God very well, did they? Every single day of their journey, God kept showing his people how well he would look after them if they would just listen and if they would trust him and do what he told them. When they were hungry, God made the sky rain food, bread coming down from heaven. What is it? They asked each other. They didn't know. So they called it, what is it? Which actually is quite a good name for something when you don't know what it is. When they were thirsty, they started quarrelling with each other. God, however, made water come from a rock in the middle of the desert. Moses called that place quarrelling because that seemed like a good name as well. But still God's children didn't trust him. They thought they could do a better job than God. They thought they could look after themselves quite fine, thanks very much. But God knew they couldn't be happy without him. So he took them to a tall mountain. God wanted to talk to his people and show them what he was like. He wanted to help them to know him better. And he wanted to tell them about this amazing land that he was going to give them. The whole earth belongs to me, God said, but I've chosen you. 
You are my special family. I want you to live in a way that shows everyone else what I'm like so that they can know me too. God called Moses up the mountain. It was a tall mountain. And it shook with thunder. And there was lightning and a big storm. And God gave Moses ten rules. We call them the Ten Commandments. And it really says this, I want you to love me more than anything else in the world. To know that I love you too. That's the most important thing of all. Of course, God gave them other rules like don't make yourselves pretend gods or don't kill people, don't steal, don't lie. The rules showed God's people how to live and how to be close to God and how to be happy. They showed how life works best. God promises to always look after you, Moses said. Will you love him and keep these rules? Yes, we said. They, yes, we can do it. Yes, whoa. And everybody was happy for a bit. But they were wrong. They couldn't do it. No matter how hard they tried, they couldn't keep God's rules all the time. God, of course, knew that they wouldn't be able to do that. But he wanted them to know it as well. And he wants us to know it too. Only one person ever kept all the rules. And many years later, a long time after God's people were at Mount Sinai, God sent Jesus. He never broke a rule. He kept all of the laws. You see, he had to be perfect so that they and we could be saved, that we could be made right with God. The rules couldn't save them, but Jesus could. The rules they were supposed to help God's people be different to the rest of the world. Not odd, not strange, different. They were to live differently because they were to live in a way that pleased God. They were to listen to God. They were to follow God. And when people looked at them, they were supposed to see and understand that God had chosen them and God was looking after them and God was blessing them and God was with them. It didn't really work. But actually nothing's changed. You see, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to listen to God. We're supposed to love God. We're supposed to follow God. And we're supposed to be just a wee bit different to everybody else. We're supposed to love God and love other people. I can't keep all of the commandments. I can't do it. I know I can't. But I can try and love God. And I can try and love other people. And that's really what God asks us to do, you and me. So let's this week try and put that into practice. Let's this week try our very best to love God and to love other people. And maybe what we need to do is think of a way that you can show love to somebody this week. It's good to be a friend of God. But we've got to let other people know that we're friends of God and we've got to show that we love God in the way that we live. So let's try hard this week to let people know that we love God and that he loves them. Have a great week 
I hope you have loads of fun, whatever else you've got organised today. You might want to stay for the 11 o'clock service or go and do something else really exciting. But I hope whatever you do, you have a great week with God and with each other. Bye for now.